Hi, I'm Andrew Harvey, and this is the second video in the series on login and reporting in VT SCADA. Now, in the first video, I talked about the three basic parts that go into any report, which is to store information to have to report on, to do some calculations or statistics on that information, and then to present the result. I also showed you how to configure the VT SCADA historian, which is the tag that saves information to the data store. In this video, I'm going to talk about tools that are available to you for collecting information and for doing some math on those numbers, whether that's to calculate averages, totals, or any other statistic that you want to save. Most of the tags that you will use to read process data, such as the analog status, digital status, and pump status tag, have a built-in link to the historian. Let's open the tag browser and take a look at some of these. Now I'm going to change my area to example because I created several sample tags to use for this video. I'm going to also begin by opening the analog status tag to take a look at its configuration and we'll go to the historian tab. Now for every tag that is collecting data, you can choose which historian to use if you have more than one. Most applications will never need more than the, the one built in historian. But if yours does, it's important to plan ahead. After having collected data with one historian, you should never switch to the inside of a tag to tell it to use a different historian. Now, note that it's possible to enable or disable logging. That's normally tied to a, a digital tag, such as a digital status or some other. For example, it may be that certain measurements should not be collected at all while a pump or some other piece of equipment is not running. In such a case, a pump status tag could be used as a trigger to control when measurements are being collected and when they're not. Now for tags that have a built-in link to an historian, values are collected on change. In the case of an analog status tag, it's possible that you might have system noise that generates a lot of very, very small changes that you don't want to record. That's why there's a deadband option. Now, by default, that will be one quarter of 1% of the scaled tag range. But you can always change that default in the application properties to be any value that you want. And if you choose, you can set a unique value for each analog status tag. Now note, this default value is a relatively new feature in VT SCADA. If you have an older version of VT SCADA, there is no default. You must set the deadband for every single individual analog status tag. Also note that in older versions, this parameter was stored in the I.O. tab, not in the historian tab. Okay, closing this one. For tags that don't have this built-in connection to the historian, such as perhaps an analog input or a digital input, for those, you can add a logger tag. This acts as a go-between, taking values from any tag that you care to record and then passing them on to the historian to be saved. Now, be careful here as well. Never add a logger to any tag that has a built-in historian connection. I mean, besides being a complete waste of your time, it simply doesn't work to try to log a tag twice. So, once the historian is configured and you're, you're collecting information from your, your I.O. tabs, the next thing to consider is statistics. In addition to saving raw process data, you might want to calculate, record, and display live statistics as new values continue to come in. Now, VT SCADA makes several tools available for that task. For example, you can use a totalizer tag to monitor values that show a flow rate, and then translate that into a value over any interval in time. In this tag, you can monitor any other tag that has that value. Now, make sure you set the time scale to match. If you're monitoring gallons per minute, it won't do to calculate a value based on gallons per second. Use the zero cutoff to avoid counting system noise while the flow isn't running. Now, this isn't so much a dead band, it simply ignores any value that's smaller than the set limit. The totalizer will write to the historian, but only so often as you tell it with the log interval. Now, 
he will continue counting at a moment by moment, but will, will only write values to the historian every so often, as you say, in this configuration. When it writes, you have the option to reset the count to zero and start counting again. Or you can configure it the way I've done, so that I'm adding a new value to the historian every 10 minutes, but what I've done is use an external reset. Now that is a trigger tag that I configured to switch to a, a true value at midnight. So my totalizer is going to accumulate values all day long, storing them at 10 minute intervals, and then at midnight, start counting again for the next day. Let's close that, and then let's move on to the next one, which is if you want to keep track of how many times equipment starts, you can use a counter tag. This can watch any tag whose value changes from a pure zero to a non-zero. In other words, any digital tag or any alarm tag. It would be easy to use the counter tag to monitor an alarm tag if you want a count of how many times a particular alarm is activated. Now, if the alarm is built into another tag, such as an analog status, you'll need to write an expression, but that's not difficult. This also has controls for the log interval and the reset, just as the totalizer tag did. The history statistics tag can keep track of a number of different statistics. In fact, seven possibilities can be used. So I can monitor any tag I want and keep track of the average value, the minimum value, the maximum value, value at start, zero to non-zero transitions, in other words, starts, running time, or it can be a totalizer. Now, at first, it might seem like this duplicates some of what we just saw with the totalizer and the counter, but this tag works a little bit differently. What it will do is look at values within a window of time, and then at a regular interval, the window will be shifted by a set amount, and then the statistic recalculated. The shift must be equal to or less than the duration. So, for example, you could have monitor an average over a one hour time frame, recalculating every hour for the next hour coming, or recalculating every five minutes within the hour. Now, note that while the historian can have a built-in link to an historian tag, it doesn't have one configured by default. So if you want your history statistics tags to record what it's calculating, you must come in here and select your historian tag. There's also an analog statistics and a digital statistics. Those are provided as a convenience. What they do is generate a series of history statistics tags for a, a predefined set of different lengths of windows. Now, finally, don't forget the calculation tag. A calculation tag can monitor any other tag, or it can monitor several other tags. It can also use all of the math functions within the VTSCADA programming library to come up with pretty much any example that you want. In my example on the screen here, I'm using the derive function to calculate the rate of change per minute of the level in tank number one. All right, so with that, we've seen how to collect information within our status tags, how to pass it to the historian, and we've seen several different tools for doing statistics within VTSCADA. Please watch my third video in the series, where I'll show you how to use the historical data viewer in order to view what you've been collecting.